Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode and show of Real Estate Investing with Jay Connor. A special welcome if this is your first time to the show. We welcome everybody. We're on Google Play, we're on iTunes, and we're on a couple of different YouTube channels. And so no matter where you are tuning in from, a very special welcome. Now, if this is your first time to tune into the show, we talk all things real estate investing talk about single family houses primarily, but we also talk about commercial deals. We talk about land. We talk about how to find the deals, deeply discounted deals. We talk about how to get your deals funded without relying on the banks or the mortgage companies, without relying on hard money lenders or anything like that. We talk about how to get them so fast, how to automate the business. And since I just mentioned, funding your deals. Again, if you're brand new, I'm known as the private money authority because 15 years ago, my wife, Carol Joy and I started investing here in Eastern North Carolina. But after five years into the business, we got cut off from the banks with no notice. You may recall what was going on between 2008 and 2009. And so my definition of coincidence is God's way of staying anonymous. In less than two weeks of being cut off from the banks, I was introduced to this wonderful world of private money. And so for the past 10 years, I've never missed out on a deal because I did not have funding. In fact, as of right now, today, we've got 48 private lenders that are funding our deals. And so if you are interested in learning about how to find these private lenders, how to work with private lenders, how to get funding for your real estate deals, regardless of your, you know, what's your mortgage banker, what's your loan officer. In other words, this world has got nothing to do with your credit score. You can have a credit score that stinks and have no verification of income and get just as much funding for your deals as I have. So if that sounds remotely interesting to you, I've got an online class on the internet on demand, waiting for you to go watch. It's called Where to Get the Money Now, Five Steps to Getting Unlimited Funding for Your Deals. And so if you're watching on one of the new YouTube channels or one of the platforms that are video, I'm going to put it up right here on the screen. The website you can go check out right after the show and get the funding for your real estate deals is www.jayconner.com forward slash money webinar. That's J A Y C O N N E R dot com forward slash money webinar to get the funding for your deals. Well, we're celebrating our year long anniversary of here on the show. Uh, we are blessed. We are now north of over 150,000 downloads and listens. And we're just getting thousands and thousands of listeners and viewers just like you every week now. And so thank you so much for showing up. We appreciate you if you're on iTunes, uh, rating and uh, uh, rate, review, subscribe so you don't miss out on future shows. Same thing on Google Play. And if you're watching on one of the YouTube channels, you can comment below the video or put in your questions and we'll get your real estate investing questions answered. One thing I've really enjoyed doing here on the show since we launched is I've had amazing guests and experts in this world of real estate investing some of the top movers and shakers in the nation we've had here on the show. And today is no exception to that. So we've got two guests today and I'll introduce the first one. Then we'll move to the second one. And while we're going to be talking, I'm just going to go ahead and give everybody a teaser as to why you want to stick around here on the show. We're going to talk about four topics here on the show in the next 20 minutes or so. We're going to talk about the importance of networking and the specifics of networking and why it is uh, important for you to become a very, very skilled networker and how that will put money in your pocket. My guests are also going to be talking about overcoming fear. And if you're a brand new real estate investor, the, the tips and strategies on having your very first successful real estate deal. Thirdly, we're going to talk about mentoring and how important that is. And then we're going to talk about education and learning and how important that is to always be a continual learner. Anyway, we have got very special guests today. My first guest is Wyatt Wallace. 
Let me tell you a little bit about Wyatt. In fact, I met both of my guests, Wyatt Wallace and Jennifer Hamrick. I met them uh, just a few short months ago up in Nashville, Tennessee. I was speaking at an event there, and we got to do the bus tour together out looking at bank-owned properties. So first, Wyatt. I'll tell you a little bit about Wyatt before we bring him on. Yes, he is an entrepreneur. He is a real estate investor himself. And he invests in multifamily uh, units and rentals, and he's into fix and flips. And right now, as of today's show, he currently owns 28 rentals and commercial doors. And he's got other investment properties as well in multiple states. Now, prior to Wyatt getting into real estate investing, I now know why he has such a big smile. Yes, he's a former actor from Los Angeles, as in LA, not lower Alabama, but Los Angeles. And prior to that, he was into uh, web audio production. But Wyatt, no wonder he and I hit it off when we first met. He's got a servant's heart and he's very, very involved in his local church community. He's president of the board of trustees at Unity Church in Nashville. So he's also very good at raising capital and doing business with joint venture partners. And his interest, he's into Nashville hockey and football. He loves country music, concerts, camping, cooking, and flipping houses with his mother, Beverly Love. And he, re- he lives in Nashville. So, uh, Wyatt, welcome to the show. Thank you, Jay. Man, that was a wonderful intro. Appreciate it. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, you know, when I met you a few short months ago, I should have known. You had been down the acting road. I did not know that. You did a good job keeping that from me when we met. But anyway, glad to have you here on the show, Wyatt. It's a pleasure. Yeah. And then sitting right there to your right and our left is your business partner, Jennifer Hamrick. So Jennifer is a realtor and she also, just like you, has a servant's heart. She uh, works right now and has been for a while with what's called the Parks family. So that's where she hangs her shingle. She loves meeting new people, helping clients find the right house to call home. That's her passion. Now, prior to real estate, she was in social work for five years with a nonprofit. And uh, she was in the Department of Children's Services. And prior to that, she was in sales for nine years, management for 11 years. But as it relates to our show today, she's a very, very active agent. She represents buyers, sellers, renters, and and I say Nashville, actually, Wyatt and Jennifer are active and working with real estate investors, buyers of homes, sellers of homes, all in the middle Tennessee area. But Jennifer has also got the reputation for taking care of her clients, guiding her buyers to obtain the best value for their dream home and helping sellers alike. So anyway, Jennifer also has experience in working with real estate investors, helping them grow their portfolios and making the most profit possible off of their flips. And another thing, if uh, folks, if you're anywhere in the Middle Tennessee area, both Jennifer and Wyatt, they founded the Middle Tennessee Investors and Wholesalers Network, and they have over on average over 100 attendees every month at their happy hour mixer in downtown Nashville. So Jennifer, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Jay. It's so great to see you again. It's great to see you again too. And you know, not until, you know, seeing your all's bios and your background did I understand as to why I connected with you all so easily and so quickly when we were together a few months ago there in Nashville. So it's, it's great to be back. So we're going to talk about networking pulling the trigger on your first deal, mentoring and continual education and learning. I want to go ahead and put this out to everybody. Y'all have got your own podcast show as well, don't you? We We sure do. do. Yes. So what's, what's your all's podcast show and how do people tune in to hear your all's show? Yeah, it's called Corkscrews and Contracts. We drink wine and we talk real estate. (laughs) <laughs> uh, you can find us on iTunes and uh, basically wherever you, um, you, you get your podcasts and we're on corkscrewsandcontracts.com. Love it. Love it. So let's go ahead and jump right in, uh, into our topics. But before we get into our topics, I want to get just a little bit more background. So Jennifer, you go first. Why real estate and how'd you get into it? So with my background, I have a business degree and with my background in business and sales, And then with my background with helping people, 
I was at the time in the past, I was helping people during the worst time of their life when they lost their children. So that is very wearing and I want it to help people in a very happy time. So this is a perfect fit for me because I'm able to combine my passion for helping people, but also my love for and knowledge for business, I bring it together and, and help people there. Makes sense. Wyatt, how'd you get interested in real estate? <laughs> yeah. Well, when I moved to Nashville, originally from uh, Los Angeles or directly, mom wanted to follow and we needed a place for her to live found a house, decided that we wanted to get a foreclosure and fix it up because she's super handy. And over the course of well, 13 months or so, uh, we worked every day on that house, just the two of us fixing it up and made enough money to pay off all my student loans. And then that was the split. So, uh, so it was great. I said, I love this business. And just being able to take something old and worn down and make it new feels really great. Uh, so that's why I love, love real estate. I love it. All right. So the audience is curious, Wyatt. The audience is curious. What kind of reruns can we go watch and see your face <laughs> in movies out in LA? You got to tell us. <laughs> this is a long list. Actually. Is, <laughs> uh, I did a lot of background acting when I first got out there. So everything from Entourage to Melrose Place. Gosh, when that was on. Oh, uh, CSI. I was one of the techs on that. The biggest thing I did was actually a singing show called The Singing Bee on country music television, and I won that in 2011. So uh, <laughs> I started nice. out karaoke nice. and ended up being on a television show. I love it. I love it. Okay, so let's jump into our topics here that I know the audience wants to hear about. So networking, you know, when, I, when we say that word networking, that's got all different kinds of definitions in people's heads. And it means different things to different people. And I would imagine a lot of people, when they hear the word networking, it sounds like work. After all, it's got that word in the word networking, right? So let me just open it up to you two. Why networking? What does networking mean to you? And what does networking, what has networking done for you all? And why do you think it's, it is such an important topic as it relates to my audience? So networking really, for us, it, it's how we met. And so at an event for networking and meeting with other uh, sales professionals and people that, are, that are, are big in the industry, especially real estate, and the connection that was made between us kind of, kind of showed us that it's not just work, it's about improving your life. And the connections that you do make through networking can get you all kinds of things from deals to friends to, well, the relationship. So, so it works out really well like that. And uh, Jennifer taught me so much more about, you know, there's so much more to networking, meeting the person, and then the follow-up. And that's a big part of it. And Jennifer, what do you, you know, you do a lot about, you know, sending letters and calling and so forth. I think it's important to, after you meet somebody, to let them know that that conversation was important to you and remember something about that conversation. So I always follow up after I meet someone with a handwritten letter and remember something we talked about. So that way they know they were not just a number that night at that event. Because I have gone to events before and I have felt like they did not care about anything we talked about after that event. And it's important they know that they weren't just a number, they're actually a person and you want to connect with them past that event. And that's huge because if you don't connect, you could really be missing out on opportunity. So where do you go? So as it relates to real estate investors, what type of events or networking events do you recommend they go to? Yeah. So I think in the beginning for us, it was important for us to meet people because when we moved here, we didn't know anybody. And so we went on websites searching for events, meetup.com website. Eventbrite. Eventbrite. Mm -hmm. Yes. Eventful is in Nashville. So those were websites where you could find different events or find things that you and people had in common. Like it might be a bowling event and maybe you and that person loves bowling. So it already gives you common ground when you get there. But over time, we realized not all those events were good for us personally. Mm -hmm. And we wanted something more focused in 
real estate and helping people that through an event with connecting with investors and wholesalers. And that's when we decided to come up with our own event. Mm -hmm. And, and your own event is the, the whole, uh, is the middle Tennessee investors and wholesalers network. That's correct. It sure is. Yeah. As a flipper, a lot of my time is spent not necessarily looking for property and bringing it forward to where I can then do the work on it. I'm looking for deals, but I'd love to be able to make a connection with who, a person whose job it is to go and source deals from sellers directly. So we, we put our heads together and I guess seven months ago and said, you know, let's give this a shot. We'd love more deals. Who has them? And let's make a network for it. So as an investor, I wanted to make a connection directly to wholesalers. And, and that's what we were able to do. And we've really structured our event to be more of that friendly. You're here to grow a relationship. And we want to see you on a regular basis because that's the key to it is just going to one networking event. I know a lot of people, if it's your first one, it's nerve wracking and it's a new experience entirely. But imagine the value of going back and seeing the same face over and over again. And before you know it, you begin to, to know enough about that person to say, hey, let's get coffee. Let's start uh, some kind of a, a connection here. And before you know it, you're actually doing deals with that person. And it's just easy. So what advice do you have? Of course, you know, I, you know, I, I teach my students at my live events the, in, in the importance of networking. So I'm all about this subject. So what advice do you have to someone when they're going to a real estate investing network or like it's a local RIA or it's a meetup or whatever, what advice can you have to give to what should a person's objective be? I mean, I know the objective is let's don't go to the event and be a wallflower, right? <laughs> so what, what should someone do to get the biggest benefit out of being there? I'd say know specifically what you're looking for and what field you're in. Real estate has a lot of avenues. So it's nice to know, okay, I'm a, I'm a, a residential flipper or a rehabber. So people that I should look to meet might be uh, closing attorneys, might be uh, contractors, floor and tile people. So those people I would look to gain knowledge of or meet but I should also keep my opportunities open for people who are doing exactly what I'm doing. And that's, that's a tendency that is drilled into us, I guess, as entrepreneurs is to think that this is my idea. No one else has the same idea and I should hold on to it for dear life. But if you just let go, you realize that the other person that's doing the same thing that you're doing and may have some great tips for you and things that you should avoid or things that you should really do in order to make it easier for you. So remember that you should be open to people who are doing the same thing. Yes, I think that building your sphere of influence is so important, kind of like to add on to what he said. When I go to events, I will, I have gained friendships. I have gained, as he said, a relationship and so many business partners as well as, as business deals off of these events. But I went with an open mind and an open heart where I wasn't there to gain from it. Don't go in there and say, I'm here to sell to everybody here tonight because that, that comes through and you seem a lot less genuine and you should be there to help others. And then it, it comes back to you. Thank you so much because I knew that you were going to say something along those lines. From my experience, when I go to a networking event, whether I'm a first timer or I've been there a long time, it's all about, I have a question that I, re, that I repeat in my mind. How can I serve these people? How can I serve this person? And I view myself as a connector. So once I begin to know people at the event uh, or in a group, then I just take on the responsibility myself to be a connector. So when I see someone that's new, that's coming in that I've never seen before, then I adopt those people. I'll walk up to them. I'll introduce myself, make them welcome, find out what they're looking for. And then I'll get them introduced to some people. And I have discovered through not looking for anything in return, no conditions, no strings attached. You serve people and get them connected with other people. You don't have to worry about yourself through the law of reciprocity and you know, what God's put, what God has put in place in this, on this planet 
It's all going to come back. How can I serve? And I tell you, the other thing that comes to my mind on networking is let me tell you what drives me crazy. And I bet it drives you all crazy too. <laughs> what drives me crazy. What drives me crazy is going to a networking event. I'm visiting with somebody and they want to give me their business card and I didn't ask for it. I'm thinking to myself, why are you giving me your business card when I don't even want your business card, right? <laughs> you know, don't, don't put your business card. I mean, why are you giving me that piece of paper, right? I just started talking to you. Yeah. So when I go to networking events, I don't go to give out cards. If somebody asks, I will. But I don't go to the event to give out cards. I go to events to get cards. Yes. And I want to I want to get cards with people that I want to, as you said, Jennifer, follow up and dive deeper, dive deeper on that relationship. Any tips on that handwritten note? I, I've got a talk that I give that I titled some years ago, The Power of the Handwritten Note. And of course, you write that handwritten note and like people can't throw it away because it's like a gold nugget. You just don't get handwritten notes in the mail anymore these days. But what, what tip or tips can you give on uh, taking advantage to its fullest on sending somebody a handwritten note? Don't overthink it. I'm guilty of that because I overthink everything. <laughs> but don't overthink it. Keep it simple. You don't even have to fill up the whole page. Just as long as you let them know they, that the person was on your mind after the event and, and that there was something that y'all talked about that was important. Just one thing you talked about that you can bring up in that handwritten note, like, I hope your pet, you know, your pet's doing better, feeling better, or whatever it may be. It's just more that that's, there's, it is special to them when they get it. In other words, you're going to communicate to that person that you actually were listening while they were talking. <laughs> yes. 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 Yeah. The other, another thing that drives me nuts at the networking events is I'm talking with somebody and their eyes are over there and their eyes are over there. And I like want to say, hello, are you here? You know? And so, you know, that's another big tip is when you're actually visiting with someone, what I remind myself is when I'm visiting with someone, they are the most important person in my life right now in that moment in time and to be, and to be totally present. Okay. That's excellent. So on your handwritten note, do you have a typical way that you end it out or is there a call to action or is there nothing at all? You just sent a genuine expression of it was so nice to meet you and let's stay in touch. I don't do a call to, act, call to action and I do that on purpose. I want it to just be very genuine and not like I'm out to sell you something. And if I do a call to action, they're like, oh, well, she really didn't care. She wants to sell me a house. Thank you. Thank you. Love it. Because, you know, people, as you said a moment ago, they're going to see right through as to whether you're genuine or not. Mm -hmm. Okay. Your first deal. So let's take for just a moment and we'll come back to all the entire audience of the, you know, experienced real estate investors. But we got a bunch here, a bunch of folks here that have still not yet done their first real estate investing deal. So what's your advice to the new real estate investor that is yet to do the first deal? Get off the sidelines, definitely get in, I would say. And we would say from experience, start off slow. Don't think that you have to swing for a million dollars right off the, <laughs> right off the, uh, on the start. It's, it's the, the moving parts just get more, they multiply when you, when you get to higher dollars. So it should be really helpful to get into something that's a lower dollar, a lower interest payments while you're doing the work you're doing on the property. And if you start small and then work your way up, you'll be having that private jet in no time, I fully believe. So <laughs> start off small. And that was our first one. It was just a $60,000 house, three bedroom, one bath. And that is a, I, I, I think I had my most fun on that small house. And I, I say that's what's to look forward to for someone getting started. Well, and Beautiful. everybody will make mistakes on their first ones. And let's let's be real in real estate <laughs> no house no transaction is the same so you're always learning so it's better to have that learning curve on a smaller dollar amount versus the million dollar properties so definitely go ahead and get started but but do it with a smaller smaller cash amount 
Yeah, yeah. There's more room for error and forgiveness in it, mm -hmm. uh, and that's all. That is exactly what you need at the beginning. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Well, let's talk for a moment about mentoring. So, why is that an important topic to you? So a mentor basically is someone who's been there before, someone who is giving of their time and hopefully they, they have a little more knowledge of the path that you're looking to go down. It's really important to, uh, to have one because, because if you're, you're brand new and you're thinking about, well, okay, here's the profit I'm looking to get, but then I don't know all the little things along the way. And it's, you won't know those because you've never been there before. So to have a mentor and someone to say, hey, you should look at this, this is coming, expect this, oh, we have to pay taxes now, all of those things are really good to have, have a conversation with, with someone who's, who's been there before. And the, the mentor is also a good one, is going to help push you to make moves, push you to get going and, and have some kind of feedback and, and, and support. And sometimes it's nice just to be able to bounce ideas off someone else somebody that maybe isn't as involved emotionally on a deal so they can give an outsider's opinion. Yeah. I tell my students, I said, you know what, you're going to pay for your education one way or the other. You know, <laughs> do, do you want to pay a really, really high price, uh, you know, out there in the field uh, where the landmines are, or, you know, do you want to get a mentor? And not only save yourself a lot of money, but also save yourself a lot of time mm -hmm. because in working with a mentor, you're going to get there a whole lot quicker. Mm -hmm. And then finally, before we wrap up the show, y'all, one of your topics you are very passionate about, and that is being a continual learner and continuing your education. Why is that important? And do you have any experience recently as to why that has now been endorsed to you as to why you should really continue to learn? Yes. Oh, Wyatt and I are always reading, watching YouTube videos, going on, listening to podcasts. That's and right. sometimes we learn stuff just from interviewing people on our podcasts. Yeah. And in some cases saved us from making those mistakes and others we've been able to relate to and just know it's not only us making <laughs> that mistake. <laughs> or did, we weren't the only ones that did it. And we feel like you will never stop learning in real estate. And it's so important to stay on top of, of anything new or changing within the industry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, as soon as it's funny, this industry will teach you whether you want it or not. So as soon as you think, you know, everything, just wait. <laughs> and so I think it's good to keep in the process of always knowing example being I, I own an apartment building. And one of the tenants, you know, had an opportunity, I guess not an opportunity. The previous seller had said, Hey, if you stay, I will pay your cable bill. Well, I didn't know that taking over the property. And so knowing that now that those agreements kind of happen with between owners and, and, and their tenants over time. Now I know that, but I would have known that if I'd have followed a podcast or <laughs> read a book of someone that already owns multifamily properties. So, so it's important to keep your eyes open, always be okay to learn and absorb new information because you may not need it now, but soon you will. Well, and along with that, you know, I've discovered that like in the realm of marketing and locating motivated sellers, you know, particularly if you're locating off market sellers, what worked two years ago may not be working as well today. And then, you know, you may like, you know, you and your team, uh, Wyatt, you all do a lot of outbound calling to uh, off market sellers or potential sellers. And, you know, you're using uh, dialers that, do, that makes you more efficient on outbound calling. And so you got to keep learning because it's all, as you say, it's, it's all the time changing. Well, Wyatt and Jennifer, we're out of time, but I must say it's been fantastic having you here on the show. And just to let everybody know and remind you, if you're in the anywhere in the middle Tennessee area, Jennifer and Wyatt work together in the realty company. You're looking for a realtor to represent you on making offers. I mean, I always use my same realtor to make all of my offers because I know they're going to have my best interest at heart. And so, Anywhere in the middle Tennessee area, you can reach out to Wyatt and Jennifer 
for uh, working with you and they can be your realtor on your team. And you also all you all are also looking for joint venture partners, right? Definitely. We sure are. Partners that want to get in on flips as well as buy and holds for multifamily. So mm -hmm. so yeah, we'd love to talk to anyone. You can reach us on our on the website there. Yeah, and you uh, again your podcast is Corkscrews and Contracts and that's also a website, right? Yes, it is. It is. Yeah, awesome. Now, you've got a free giveaway to uh, my listeners. So tell the folks about your free consultation that you're offering to give away and why they would want to take advantage of it. Absolutely. So we're giving away a free 15 minute phone call and that is really useful for anyone that's getting started in real estate, especially investing. Uh, because you may have, have, have gotten all this information from different sources, you need someone to kind of give you the right funneling the right direction to go. And we'd love to provide that to anyone and to walk you through the process of buying too. Jennifer is great mm -hmm. at that for anyone that's new and then seasoned investors as well. Sometimes you need a tune up on what it is that you do. Talking to someone in, in the local market or, or just a, a market away, it's a great way to get that. Uh, Nashville's a, a hot market. So we do a lot of things that some other markets don't do. And we're really happy to help people out in, in all kinds of ways. And a lot of people here just invest in Nashville, but they have no idea why. So we know this market and we'll be glad to talk to you more about it. That's great. Okay, Wyatt, last word, final comment. Thank you, Jay. Love what you do. And we're just glad for the opportunity. Yes. Awesome. Jennifer? Yes, thank you. This has been such a fun experience and I'm so glad we were able to connect again and you do great, great things for people getting started in the industry. So thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, thank you all for joining the show. Again, everybody check out corkscrewsandcontracts.com. If you're anywhere in the middle Tennessee area, you'll definitely want to connect with them and all of their networking attendees at their middle Tennessee investors and wholesalers network. That's in downtown Nashville. Where is that in uh, Nashville? Y'all meet once a month. When is the meeting? Yeah, it's the second Wednesday of every month. It's a happy hour time. So we go from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. That way it's right after work. Or for a lot of us in the real estate industry, it's whenever we get a break <laughs> to go to something. And uh, yeah, come on out. We'd it's, love it. It's right off of Music Row. Mm -hmm. Does it move from place to place or is it always at the same place or should they go to a website to find out where it currently is? Because this show is going to be out there forever. Yeah, same location for Music Row. Go to Eventbrite and you can search for it. Uh, we're also on Facebook and that way we do take reservation or RSVPs for it so we know how much to how much food to prepare for everybody. So, right. so go to Eventbrite or you can go on Facebook and again searching for the Middle Tennessee Investors and Wholesalers Network, right? Yeah. Awesome. All right, well thank you all so much and thank you our audience for tuning in. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority, wishing you all the best. Here's to taking your real estate investing business to the next level. And until the next show, we'll see you soon. Bye for now.